Hey guys, my name is Salem Sony, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Here I help individuals such as yourself be more motivated, discover their purpose, and understand that you are God's very best. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Today I want to talk about something that is very dear to my heart. Um, I'm originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, living in America, but what's more important to my identity is the faith that I have in Jesus Christ. And I remember when I gave my life to Christ, I really kind of exploded and changed my life. I still remember when I was back at the university, I really wanted to do something for God. I come from a family of ministers, both my dad and my mom are pastor, my dad is a bishop. Uh, so seeing some of that, I really had a desire, not just because of what my parents were and are or had done, I really just wanted to have an impact and help others discover the love that is found in Jesus. So when I went to university, I went to a relatively large university. It was about 46,000 students at the specific campus that I was and they had multiple campuses. So one of the things that I really wanted to do is I really wanted to do an event that would impact more people there. During my duration, it, it had been about a year and a half since I'd been on campus and Ever since I've been on campus, I had never seen a relatively large Christian organized event. I think the largest I'd been on was an event where all the Christian organization came together and it was in a room in a, in a big kind of uh, like a theater hall. It was about 800, I think, could be seated there. And I think, you know, it was about three fourths, almost full, but, you know, it wasn't like such a, to me, being on a campus where there were 46,000 students and only 800 could be, I was like, man, I'm pretty sure there's more Christians than this. And I, my, my perception was, I think we can also attract more people so that they can find and discover the love of Jesus. So ever since then, you know, I always felt this desire in my heart to try to do an event. And I felt like God gave me a specific clear vision uh, to do that event. So the summer of 2014, I decided to really kind of obey to the vision that uh, God dis uh, put in my heart. So I decided to speak with a friend of mine who, you know, today is one of really my close best friends. His name is Stephen Thor. I talked with Stephen at the time. Stephen was a single, uh, he just had graduated. He was doing campus ministry. So we're basically two guys, uh, both single, broke, uh, trying to put this Christian event. But our goal was just not to put another event where it would bring, you know, 20, 30, 40 people. We really wanted to like hit on a larger scale. Our goal was to do maybe a thousand or maybe 2000, maybe 5,000 people. Why not? Uh, the problem was we had no money. Uh, we didn't have that much of an influence to bring that many people. And we didn't even know where to start. But we knew that God had given us the vision and like we felt the sensing that it was the timing for us to do so. Long story short, we ended up doing an event and we called it Invasion. What's up? When Invasion happened, it was an incredible time. It brought close to 2,500 to 3,000 people that came to that event. It was just an incredible time. A lot of people were touched, you know, the gospel was preached. It was a musical event, so we had different featured DJs that came, EDM, it was an incredible time. I want everybody on campus to hear you scream. So the reason why I'm giving you a little bit of a context of what that is, is because some of you guys may be watching, you have a desire to do the same thing, right? Whether it might be in your youth group, whether it might be on campus, whether it might be you're not part of any organization, you know, you just want to do something for God in your city as part of your church, uh, as part of just impacting where you are. I want you to know that you can. There's there's nothing, uh, there's one Bible verse that even came to me today as one of my daily Bible verse that says, nothing is impossible to God. I can do all things through God that gives me strength. So I hope that also this can be an encouragement to you that you can do all things through God that gives you strength. Even if it is something that seems right now relatively impossible, maybe you don't have the money, you don't have the connection, you might not have the influence to pull an event that brings about 100 to 500 people, you still can do it. So here are some of the tips that we did, and we, meaning me and Steven, to put some of these events together. 
Uh, the first thing I want to say is, one, I had the desire. If you're watching this, I'm pretty sure you do have a desire to also do an event. See, my goal was I wanted to do an event that I knew that would be of excellence, that would adequately represent Christ. I wanted to be a very a, a Christ-focused event. I didn't want to just put a gimmick where people would come, uh, you know, have fun, but you know, Christ would be kind of like in a facade. We just have a concert musician. No, I just I wanted the gospel to be preached. I wanted people to receive Jesus. I wanted them to do an event where because I was on campus and my, my university at the time was really known as a party university. I didn't want people to confuse it with just another party event. Number two is timing. And here specifically, I wanna talk about God's timing. One of the things I was very, very sure about being able to accomplish this was because I had this assurance that God wanted us to accomplish this event. So to back up a little bit on my story, I told you guys, but when I was at Penn State, I had this vision and we felt like it was a time to do it during that summer of 2014. Here's what happened. The previous semester, the, the spring semester of 2014, before we went to the summer, I was working as a financial director of one of the student organization. And one of the things that we had the privilege to do was to be part of a, a concession stand at the football game. So Penn State football games are, you know, one of the big uh, sporting events here in the United States for co collegiate students. So the football team is really popular. So our football games at Penn State were just massive. A lot of people came. So a lot of the time that we use organizations, sometimes student groups or outside organization to run the concession stands during the football games. So one of the, the groups that was doing that was the African Student Association, and I was a treasurer for that specific group. So one and one of the responsibilities as a treasurer, I had to manage like all the finances, all the outcome that would come from concession stand, you know, go through the different channels. So I remember my, my duties and responsibility always asked me to stay behind. Like I would be probably like the last person leaving the concessions to bring, you know, uh, all the system, the money and do like a last uh, inventory check before leaving. And I remember one specific game. Uh, I don't remember exactly who were playing that game, but I still remember it was one of those games where um, we had lost the game. I still remember we lost that specific game. It was a home game, so we lost the game. As you know, I finished, like most people are, got outside, uh, like the time for me to count the inventory, to count on the money. I usually, you know, stay behind maybe about like an extra like 30 minutes, 40 minutes after the game really ended. So as I'm going out of our concession, I come out because the way our concession was after you come out of the concession stand per se, you can see the inside of the stadium. And I remember you know, seeing inside of the stadium had this flash vision that came and I saw this vision of a man sitting inside of a big stadium. It's called Beaver Stadium. It's a really huge stadium. Um, I saw somebody sitting there, standing in the middle, preaching. And then like, I feel like in a vision, I was turned to the outer, the outside of the stadium. So like the where I was standing, I'm looking inside the stadium. I'm seeing the seats, uh, the bleachers, and then I'm seeing somebody in the middle there preaching. And then I'm turned completely like a, you know, like an, a 180, and then I see crowds running from everywhere, to going towards the stadium, entering the stadium, and going towards inside where the field where the guy was preaching. And then I snapped out of the vision. Wow, it was really so powerful. I stood there, I was like, Jesus' name, right? God, it was just one of the really those strong motion. I didn't really know what to take about it at the time, so I just finished taking what I had and went downstairs. But from that moment, I knew that God wanted to do something. Um, to be frankly honest with you, I didn't think I was going to do an event at Beaver Stadium. It's like it's too huge. I mean, like that stadium can hold over a hundred thousand people. So I was like, my faith was not to the level where I could do an event with a hundred thousand people. But to me, it was a sign that God was trying to starting to call people to Him, right? And I was like, okay, let me do an event before I finish. So at that. I already felt like it was God's timing already, that now was the time. So the first thing was, like I said, you have to have the desire, but number two, you have to be sensitive to God's timing. Because when God says yes, even when in other situations you've tried before, it wasn't happening, and God's timing doors that were not open previously will be open to you. 
That's just one of the reality I found out really in ministry or even just in walking with God. When you're in sync with God's timing, when you're, you, you're listening, you're attentive to what he's telling you, the doors that used to once be close to you will be open to you. So that was one. I was really conducive to God's timing. So that vision was kind of a confirmation that now was the time for us to do so. The third thing I would say is obedience. I may have gotten the vision. I might have the desire to do so, but if I wasn't obedient to do it at that particular time, it might have never happened. What do I mean? See, at this particular time, remember, I'm only about a year and a half at this particular campus. So usually during the summer, what do you usually do? You go back home because in this summer I used to, I would have an apartment, uh, even though I would pay a year long, just during the summer months, I would go back home, uh, you know, stay with my parents, you know, enjoy uh, food from home for your mom, you know what I mean? Instead of just like the struggle bus of living by yourself during university. Um, so at that particular time for me, it was just kind of like one of those situations where I was like, I did not want to go home because I felt so strong about this vision. So what I decided to do is I, I decided to be obedient and pray about it. And I felt like now was the time for me to do so. So I, I came and shared with my friend, Stephen. So uh, Stephen, we already had talked before. He had introduced me to some of the campus ministry that were there. So we already had created a relationship. But at this particular time, I came and shared with them this vision. I still remember, <laughs> this is how broke we were. I still remember Stephen was living also like by himself, right? Uh, I still remember I come where Stephen was and I still remember he, he cooked like noodles or something like that. I think it was like, yeah, some kind of noodles. It was like literally like bachelor type food where it was like, man, I'm glad he just knows how to cook at least this kind of thing. So, but I mean, I love Stephen, man. Now he's married. He has a kid. I mean, incredible story. Um, but one of the things I love was we were there. We ate. I shared with him the vision. We sat there really kind of like quiet. And then Stephen was like, we're doing this, how are we? I said, yeah, man, we're doing this. And then from that moment, everything changed, right? Like, not only was that, like I had the vision and desire to do so, I decided to be obedient. I was scared in my mind. Like, I didn't know what that meant. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't have any money. I knew Stephen didn't have any money either. I didn't, even, listen, I didn't, like, when I said I didn't have any money, I want you guys to understand, I didn't even have, like, $200 to my name at that particular time. Why? Because all I was, I came to school really on a scholarship. Um, you know, I didn't play any sports uh, at, at the university. So it was all too <laughs> academically, really. I got through like some scholarships and grants that was able to go there because it's relatively expensive school to go to Penn State. And I was working, I was working part time to be able to pay for like my rent, for food. So all the money was basically all going towards school. I didn't have the money really to to put the event. So I was really scared out of my mind. Like that was the biggest thing that used to worry me. Like I don't have the money to do so. And because of the timing that I felt like God wanted us to do it now, we decided instead of trying to do something like a year out, this was, I think June that we're having this conversation with Steven. Yeah, this is May, like end of May, beginning of June. We decided that we're gonna do this event in August. Right. So we literally have like two months of preparation and not only that we're like now we're only left in school. So the only people who are left in school, because most of the students went back home for summer vacation, some graduated. So it's only me and Steven and a few other people who live within the state college area where the university is. The other most of the our friends at the time went back home. So now how are we going to be planning a what we think was a big event with nobody? You know what I mean? It was only us, but we decided to be obedient. So you can see there was many factors that were just going against us, right? And we wanted to do it in two months. Like that was just insane. Many of the Christian like organizations that I knew that were on campus, like were planning their events like a year out. You know what I mean? Two years out. Oh, we'll do this event, you know, next year as part of our budget. They had budgets for this. Like we're just a bunch of two broke kids, right? Who are trying to put an event together. We're giving ourselves two months to do so. And we ain't got the money to do it. That was really the situation we found ourselves. But like I said, I can do all things to God who gives me strength and you can as well. So after being obedient to do so, one of the things that was really important, and I think I, I kind of alluded to this, partnerships. So one of the things for those of you guys watching is make up in your skills and in 
your surrounding what you lack. What do I mean by that? I understood one thing. I wanted somebody who can support and believe in me. So I went to Steven because of the type of friendship we have. It's a, somebody I have a lot of respect and love for. I mean, Steven is really somebody who I believe really chases after the heart of God tremendously. He's been an example and a mentor to many young people at the time. Uh, even though we're relatively the same age, uh, I looked up to him for a lot of different things and him vice versa. So we like iron shop or iron type of situation with him. So I wanted to get to someone who could also have that crazy amount of faith and believe the way I believe. So I partnered with him. But another thing, the good word also talks about that, you know, one can slay a thousand, but two can slay 10,000. There's a power in numbers. Uh, as you can see, even our Lord Jesus himself, when he really wanted to start his ministry, what he did, he created a team. He brought the disciples. He wasn't by himself. He created a group of 12. So there's always, you can see it multiple times in the scripture, even Apostle Paul, you will see that many of his long trips, he brought somebody from you know, whether it was uh, Barnabas or it was uh, Silas. Many people, many times he would bring a team with him to go. Even when Jesus sent the disciples, he sent them sometime in groups of two to go. There's always a power in number. So partnership is very important. So you might be want to do an event as well. Find that person that will believe, first of all, in the vision that you have, that might have a similar desire, but believe in the vision that you have. He's willing to also launch themselves in that vision that, we ha that you have. So partnership is really, really important. So Stephen really is an integral part of why Invasion came to be. So we spent a lot of time strategizing, you know, basically we're just kind of like daydreaming of what could this happen. And then we went from daydreaming to actually start to put a plan together, like writing it down. Okay, what type of event do we want it? Do we want it to be a musical event? Yes. We said we want it to be festive. We want it to be a party. So now we're starting to put a plan together. So after you have the partner, start to put your plan, like plan out exactly what type of event you want to do. So we started putting an event uh, together um, and then the next big thing that we knew that we we really really had to do was we had to actually this is this is just my perception we had to make sure that we got the the date and the place approved even though we didn't have the money yet we were just walking by faith honestly so what we decided to do is we went to the campus at the time the offices for the summertime were open you know often enough big campuses are open during the summers they have you know different activities that they do during the summer uh, a lot of professors you know stay back because they're doing like research during the summer so a lot of the offices were open and, and i was working on campus as well so a lot of the the office for example student affair knew me because i was very active i was somebody who was uh, very present within those offices so they knew me so i had a pretty good relationship with many people that were there uh, so we went and started getting informed okay what does it take to be do to do an event like who do i have to be do i need a representative so many different things um so we found out okay yes we can do an event so now we had to find a secure place we secured the place where we wanted to do the event and we secured the people that we wanted to do the um, you know, the event with now we started researching again, this is all part of like really the strategy of the planning and the research. We started researching, okay. Um, who could give us like staging, lighting, sound, you know, all these different things. And then we were like, okay, who is actually going to be part of our event? All right. So we said, okay, what are some of the artists that we can have? This is a great reason again, why Steven was there because Steven had an idea of like, the context of the student body that we wanted to reach. See, Stephen is from State College. He grew up there, so he has a better understanding of the crowd that is there. He had been, he had one, gone to Penn State, he had been there earlier than I was, so he had a better understanding that what type of music should we play, you know what I mean? So it doesn't seem super corny and stuff like that. And then when we understood the type of music, can we find artists who are Christian artists who vibe within that genre? So he was able to get that connection. So that's another advantage sometimes where you lack in skills, make it up in the people you surround with, right? So that was one of the great things with him. And for example, he didn't have so many of the connection with the university, um, um, I guess, yeah, administration or uh, students affair as much as I did because of the work I did on campus. I was very involved in it. I jumped in, I made an effort to really get in contact with a lot of people. So he got more in connection with the people that will come for the event. I had made, I had many of the connection with make sure that we get approved 
<laughs> make sure that we don't get banned to do the event. So that's the reason also it played a major role to really how we got it done. We were attacking it from two various fronts. Remember, during this whole process, we don't have the money to put this event, but we're still believing that if it is God's timing for us to do so, something will happen, right? So that's, I guess, one of the other tips. You got to keep the faith. And that's another reason why the partners is so important because I remember there were times where we were down. I was down. Like, I was like, man, this is difficult. This is tough. Like, I'm missing home. I want to go back home. I was sometimes like, I felt like the deadline is too short. But Stephen was really high on faith. Like, bro, we can do it. He encouraged me. And then there were times where, like, I'm just like, yo, this is going to be crazy. And Stephen is just like, oh, man, I don't know. Like, he's just like very discouraged. And, you know, I had, I was there to pick him up. So having people where you can, you know, when don't be both down at the same time, that's the worst. You know, somebody has to be always willing to pick each other up. So that's one of the importance of really your fellowship. Another tip that I will give as well is once we started, after we put the plan together, after we started putting some of the core strategies together, we decided to tackle the money issue. So we started asking prices, for example, if we need a stage, if we need lighting, if you need music, if we have to bring in some artists, how much is it going to cost us for all of this event? We had an idea of how much it was going to be. So for you as well, you want to put an event. After you put a strategy, now put together a budget. Don't start with the budget. Here's another reason why I'm saying don't start with the budget. Because many people get hung up on the budget from the get-go and they let the fear of how big the amount would be stop you. Like you, I don't know, I, it's, I grew up in church, right? So I know how sometimes some ministries think about things. They're always, you've probably heard this before. We don't have the money to do this kind of event. Well, the church doesn't have this type of funds. Well, you know, we don't have, t like you've heard these excuses before. And one of the things for me as well was like, I didn't come from a family that was rich. I didn't have the money. I know my parents didn't have the money to do so. And, you know, I wasn't affiliated to any campus ministry. So it was only me and Steven really trying to put this together. So we came to the money side after we already had started getting the machine rolling. So the money just became just one another aspect that we make sure we had to fundraise that money. And remember, we only had two months to do this. So after we calculated how much it would cost us for the lighting, the sound, the, the artist, the music, the security, the place, um, it was something above, you know, multiple five figures. So it was not any small amount, you know, it was something that really would cost us somewhat of a pretty penny. But we still believe that it was God's timing. We still were holding on to God. I think you're the one who wants us to do this. Help us. So one of the things we started doing is we, we once started sharing the vision. Sharing the vision with people who can be able to fundraise our event. That's another thing that you need to start doing. It's a key strategy. You have to share the vision. If you're passionate in how you share the vision, many people will align themselves with you. I'm going to give you guys a very plain example of us sharing the vision. So besides going to different churches and talking about our vision during the summer, some churches didn't even know us. Some churches knew us, some of my home church, some of his home church, some of the, of the personal connection. One of the things that happened is um, we spoke to a gentleman who was the owner of a local business. Uh, near the State College area, and he had one of his grandson at the time that used to um, go to Penn State, but, you know, his life was kind of damaged through alcohol, and, you know, was just the, 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 the young son was kind of like Durrell. So we shared the vision that we wanted to bring uh, an environment where people can be safe, an environment where people can, can truly be happy without having to reside to alcohol, without it being genuine, really, because a lot of the kids, they use alcohol drugs like party life as an escape for the reality right that the life might be tough they might have suicidal thoughts they might be dealing with depression so we wanted to give them an environment where everything was genuine like you were happy not under any substance and that you know god could really impact and change your life he believed in our vision so much so that i remember he pulled out his checkbook wrote us a five thousand dollar check on the spot yeah that was crazy. For us, it was crazy. We went from like having no money to just by sharing the vision, somebody pulls out a check, $5,000. Well, it was incredible. So we decided to even use him as one of our sponsors and put out, you know, uh, one of the advertising for him. So that's another thing you can do also. You can do sponsorship stuff with different businesses. You know, God has started opening doors. Steven was able to even start talking about the event on the radio. So during that summer, he got like several spots for like advertisement on the radio. 
Um, the money started coming in from different private people, from churches, started giving us money um, for the event because they started believing the, for the event that was kind of happening. So now, because money is coming in, because things are starting to roll, we started adding people to the team. We started adding people to the team. It, wasn't, it was no longer just me and Steven. We started adding people. I remember Gabe was there. Uh, I remember, um, what's her name? Ah, oh, forget her name. But the, the team started building. Now we have a team of about uh, 10, 11 people. We met our friend Tim was there. Our friend Mike was there. So the team started growing, growing, growing. And it really made it to a point where we were about 10 to 13 people that were part of the team. You know, it, it grew up from just me, Steven, and then other people started also believing in the vision. But the reality is these were the people that were just also just available because they were there during the summer. So we started running with, their, with that team. We started running. And the crazy part was at the time now, uh, Steven went from being himself where he used to live to start having roommates. And he had just embarked his roommates into the activity. And one of the roommates ended up being Mike, uh, which now were great friends. And Mike had a friend named Timothy who also, Timothy uh, embarked in the vision. So it was just kind of incredible how God started connecting all of us. Um, so we started working. And I tell you, man, like one of the things where we were just kept sharing the vision. I remember there was a point where we talked to a, a big, it was kind of like a big producer to a big artist you known nationally, not even just a Christian artist, just a big national artist here in America. We talked to one of his producers and the producer said, yeah, man, we can come and, you know, find a way maybe to highlight your event, but we need this amount of money. And we did like, there was a lot of money that we did not have and we needed by this amount of time. Uh, we said, okay, yeah, you know, he give us maybe like, yeah, we, we can do this, but we weren't able to raise the money by the time that he wanted. So they backed out. So at the end of the day, you know, we didn't really have like a big, like headliner kind of thing. So we were like, okay, but we'll still believe that God is going to do something. So one artist, Har Madigo, man, he's, He's the guy. He came through for us. I mean, uh, love you, bro, for what you did. Uh, so the guy came in. We I listened to some of his content on SoundCloud and Spotify. Like Stephen was like, "Yo, you need to listen to this guy. I think he might be good." So I listened to. It. I was like, "Yo," I, I told Stephen, "Man, I trust you. You got the music side of things. Gate, find a way to get this guy here." <laughs> so that was basically kind of like the vision. After we started raising the money, that's another thing. After you start raising the money. The, the important part is start to delegate, right? So once you part it, we put a team together, you can't all be doing the same thing. So that's why I was like, okay, Steven, worry about that. Tim, worry about that. Mike, worry about that. So one of the things after we started having the money, we started utilizing the money to put more towards the advertisement of the event. So now we're into July. We're about to end July, actually about to start the school year back in August. So one of the things we decided to do is to go more harder on advertisement. We decided to print about 10,000 flyers because here's my mindset, right? I said 10,000 flyers, like I, like that was the marketing in me. I was like, okay, if about 10% of people come with 10,000 flyers, that's about 1,000 people. You know, well, that's not bad. You know what I mean? Depending on how we share the flyers. Um, but in my head, I was like, man, I really want 10,000 people to come. If 10,000 people came, that would have been crazy. That would mean something that like, the whole state would have to talk about, right? Because just of how much of an impact that would have been. So I decided, okay, we're gonna decide, we're gonna put, print 10,000 flyers. We decided to print out about a thousand of these shirts like this, and it was different colors. We had, um, there's this neon, then we had the green, the black and green writing, and then we have the green and black lettering. So it was just kind of like one of those really we're trying to put more weight out there and we decided because of the time the venue that we decided to be cost us also a lot of money um to do that event in there um long story short uh because i don't want to just tell the story but to kind of give you guys some ideas we started with the desires we had guts we understood and we listened to god's timing the time was now for us to do that event so we decided to be obedient to his timing i decided to partner with stephen uh, to do this event, to share the vision with him. After sharing the vision with him, one thing was part, uh, we'll believe, we'll, we became obedient, and we started working even without having the money. We started strategizing, putting a, a, a research together, what type of event that we wanted to do. So that's another important thing. You want to put the, the event after you start partnering and start now 
uh, creating the connection, trying to making the, the strategies that you put together, start working that strategy, right? So it's good to write it down, but you have, you have to start working the strategy. And we started working the strategy. One of the part that was in the strategy was fundraising the money. So we didn't start with like how much it would cost us and let that paralyze us like how to get the money we first started walking by faith and then the money was another part of it and because it's got timing and i really believe because of god's timing the door started opening right and the money started coming to pay for many of the things that we wanted to do after the money started coming we started spending not that money towards acquiring the equipment acquiring the lighting the sound uh, acquiring uh, the advertisement printed ten thousand flyers um printed out t-shirts uh bombarded social media created a twitter account facebook accounts um uh, we're just gonna put out there we went to the radio advertised on the radio uh put banner in the bus uh, for people to kind of see what we were doing so that's an important part you can see kind of like the transition of everything going there uh long story short many things happen you know the moment you're trying to do something for god i can tell you something the devil is going to come and try to discourage you or try to derail the work you're trying to do so to put that into context what what had happened for example is that as we're doing what we're doing right we're excited to do what we want to do um the place that had first given us the venue on campus to do this event backs out they're like oh we thought you guys were going to bring up a hundred people you're talking about now like maybe potentially have five thousand like we're throwing numbers like five thousand people right they were like whoa we don't want that so even though they had approved you know that they wanted to do so i think it was a verbal saying that's another thing just people saying verbally yes it's not you got to get it on paper uh, they, re they retracted their approval of the event. So now, and this is like, <laughs> this is a crazy part of the story. So they retract their approval of us having the event at this particular venue when school already started. So now we're in August, right? This is the first, no, this is like, yeah, this is the week before school starts. We're already in August because yeah, I forget when it was like August, the, the mid, mid August, I think mid August. Like the first week before school starts, they retract. I still remember that day I was broke and I was like, what are we gonna do? We've already spent the money on the advertisement. We have the flyers, we have the t-shirt, we paid for the lag, lighting, the sound. I mean, at this point we've spent like $25,000 already, like spent. So I was so broken. I was so heartbroken. I was like, God, what are we gonna do? I said, God, this is, I remember one of the prayers I was praying that day as I was just crying because it was really emotional. It was really tough for me to believe that we've come all this far for this to fail this close to the event. Like, no, nah. this was two weeks out from the event, like two weeks from the event because it was the first big event of the year, of the school year. It was like the first, nobody was throwing a party that year, that first two weeks. We were the one who were throwing that event. I was crying. I was like, God, you're the one who said that we should do this. It wasn't my desire. You said the timing was to, to do this. Like, why? Like, I was so hurt. And um, that's another important thing. So, sometimes whenever things go tough, not only that Stephen was there to encourage me, which he really did, but there were many other brothers and sisters that were there to encourage me. And I called, I remember still calling my cousin, uh, some, a big brother uh, that I highly respect. And he encouraged me that day. I still remember I called them right after I got the no. I don't know why I called them. I was like, bro, here's like, it is funny. Like, I don't think he knew of the event I was doing at all. Like, I give him a summary of what I'm doing, like three minutes. Uh, and I was like, man, I'm so discouraged. And he, he encouraged me at the moment. And so that was very powerful. I went back to my parents. Another thing, like, if you want to walk by faith, go to people who have a lot of faith. If you want to walk with miracles and healing, go to people who are walking in miracle and healing and let some of their faith and their their belief rub off on you. So important. So that's what I decided to do. And I still remember that was one of the best decisions uh, because it kept me encouraged. But still remember, even though I'm, I'm excited about doing this thing, we still don't have a venue. We don't have a place to do this event. So we started praying, we started believing that God would really bring this about. And then eventually what happened was we got a different uh, a place that was approved literally three days before the event. Because remember, one of the things we believed, and this was maybe crazy on our part, we had no venue, like we literally had no place where we wanted to do this, but we still kept giving flyers, still advertising that this was gonna be happening with no place. 
that's faith, man. We still, we still kept praying. We started, you know, talking to connections. And three days or two days before the event, I remember the event was Saturday. On Thursday, things changed. I remember at this point, I'm working on campus. I go to, to work. It was early in the morning. I'm going to work. And then I remember uh, one of the ladies, as soon as the fair brings me in, she's like, Sam, come, come, come. I come in. She makes me sit down over there. She's looking at something in the computer. And then I see her boss comes in. Uh, he looks at something with her on the computer. And then a third person comes in. They're both looking at the computer. I'm like, now I'm thinking I'm in trouble. I'm like, what did, else did I do? Uh, things started changing. <laughs> it was really crazy because I was so stressed, right? So I'm like, me and Steven are thinking, okay, like, if we have nothing by Friday, we're just going to move the event to like an indoor location where we can have maybe, I don't know, like two, three, four hundred people maybe. Uh, booking a room is also a hard last minute. So I was like, if that doesn't fall through, we'll just cancel. You know, we just said the event is canceled. Um, so I'm coming in, I'm like, man, I'm in trouble. Did I not fill out a contract correctly? It was just very, very, very stressful as a time. Um, but as they're talking over there, they're like, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, oh, you know what? Somebody that was basically one of the higher ups, like higher, higher ups in the university administration and governance of the university called and said, well, give those guys this. I mean, God is incredible. When God is for you, man, it's incredible. Like literally, I'm telling you, like one of the top three people in the whole university called and said, get those things. And... <laughs> Just thinking about that gives me chills. It's crazy. God is so good. So what happened was we ended up having a location. Listen to me. We ended up getting a new location that was closer to the that was close to the old location so we can redirect the people to the new location. But here's the kicker. The new location that we got was four to five times bigger than the previous location. <laughs> what? God is good, man. It was four to five times bigger than the previous location, man. Yo, like, that's crazy. Oh, man. Like, I still remember. <laughs> I still remember. Oh, man. I'm getting emotional. It's crazy. I still remember whenever they told me. I couldn't believe it. I was like, it's done. And, and I, I don't remember what else they were saying because I felt like I was just like, like, it was just white noise after that. I couldn't hear anything. I was like, it was too surreal. Uh, they told me, yeah, like, I'm just like, and I'm snapped back. I'm like, yeah, 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 we'll take it, we'll take it. <laughs> I never, I called Steven. I called Steven right after that. I was like, Steven, you won't believe what happened. I, I called Steven, Steven comes, he had a bike at the time, he comes and picks me up on his bike. We go, we go and see this, the place. I remember we're like, yo, this is nuts. God is so good. Yeah, man, that's what's up. Listen, new field, new place, God is good last minute, but we already knew. Look how, how big this is. Look how, look, look how crazy that is. It Trust me, you guys, you guys have no idea, but uh, it's crazy. And then um, the event ended up happening. So that's how invasion happened. So believing in God. Uh, listen, I hope this was good. I feel like I was going back in memory lane telling the story. But I hope this was helpful for you. Um, for you to understand that when you want to do an event, even with a small budget or no budget, you have to believe. You have to have that desire and believe that God really can impact. I think God wants to use young people today. And he can use you too. So believe that you can do it. Have the desires. Be in tune with God, because when you're doing something God's timing, doors will open. Also be careful that it doesn't become something that you just do out of your own desires. A lot of people would do things outside of God's timing, and you don't get the result that you want. So that's why you have to be very attentive. And sometimes God's timing doesn't always look that's the, like the most ideal, like the most convenient, like the most comfortable time to do it. But it's God's time. So. That was that, so we're, I had the desires, even Steven had the desire. Um, I was attentive to God's timing, got the vision, became, we were obedient with the, to the vision and partnered with Steven, that's very important. We put a plan together, started strategizing to what we do. We started now working the plan.
right? So it wasn't just about having a plan, we started working the plan, meeting with people, asking questions, researching how much it would cost us, started going there and then started fundraising the money to find, to, to keep the plan moving forward. And as we started keeping the plan, started bringing more of a team to come help us, delegating some of the different chores and tasks. Uh, and then as it started going into place, uh, we started advertising the event much, much more harder. So do that. Have, as you have the vision, as you're obeying, as you're putting the strategy together, uh, bring more of a team because maybe one can do a thousand, but two can reach 10,000 and even more. So there's power in numbers. And as we brought the team together, the event was an incredible time. You know, people gave their life to Christ. Uh, it was just an incredible an atmosphere and environment to do something like that. Um, so that's it. I hope this was really helpful for you. Uh, if it was, uh, give it a thumbs up and also share this video. Subscribe to the page for more stories like this. You know, give you my even more strategies on how to do something effective. Uh, I hope uh, I will hear from you guys in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Or maybe if you have some other tips on how to do an event, also a Christian event on a small budget or maybe with no money, some of the things you've done. I want to hear some of your story. Let me know in the comment section. I hope you guys are doing well. Remember, your God's very best. He loves you and he has great plans for you. See you guys next time. Take care.